Hi, welcome. In this series, we're going to talk more about long-term memory and especially the structure of long-term memory. Uh, but I'm going to start off with a description of the importance of sleep for long-term memory. Then we'll talk about explicit or conscious memory and implicit or unconscious memory. And then we'll focus on amnesia. So here we go. What's the opposite of remembering something? Well, forgetting it. Uh, and how do you define forgetting? Well, it's the ability, inability. Forgetting is the inability to recall information or recognize previously experienced uh, information or not to be able to perform um, a previously learned motor skill. All of those things are types of forgetting. And we've given up uh, researchers long ago gave up with the idea of decay theory explaining forgetting and now forgetting is understood as reflecting interference that is forgetting occurs because memories interfere with one another or disrupt one another okay and the greater the similarity in information the greater the interference right and we talked about that uh, when we spoke about the release from proactive interference now, interference disrupts memory consolidation, and that's a big problem, right? If you don't have memory consolidation, then you don't have long-term memory. And I want to talk about a really old study that is super compelling. There's a reason people are still talking about it almost 100 years later. It's a very simple study. It was conducted by Jenkins and Dallenbach back in the 1920s, so almost 100 years ago. And here's what they did. And students, this is crazy important. Okay, they had two groups of students. One group of students memorized a list of nonsense syllables right before they went to sleep. The other group of students memorized the same list of nonsense syllables in the morning right before they went to class. And then the researchers tested students' memory for the list of nonsense syllables uh, one hour, two hours, four hours, or eight hours after they had memorized the list. And the results, how much students remembered, is shown here. So the vertical axis is a percentage of syllables recalled, and the horizontal axis is time. And what I want you to see is that eight hours after study, the people who went to sleep after they studied remembered almost 60%. The people who spent the same amount of time studying the same list only remembered 10%. 10% versus 60%. Same amount of time studying, same material. Students, I need you to listen to this. If you want to remember something, study it right before you go to sleep, right? So you can take advantage of all that memory consolidation that happens with sleep. And um, because while you're sleeping, you're not having new experiences out in the world, there's less interference that can disrupt the consolidation process. So sleep after you study, really, really, really important. Students who stay up all night to memorize things, you're just not going to remember the material nearly as well is as if you spent less time studying and more time sleeping. All right, so we are going to shift now to long-term memory, and there are two big subdivisions of long-term memory that are divided by basically whether those memories are unconscious, implicit, or conscious, explicit. We'll start the section on explicit memory in the next mini lecture, so come right back.